Hello everybody, my name is Rin and welcome to my channel. Today we prepare for the Ya Patron of the Century. We are talking and debating modern art. We've been talking about cups of tea within the art community. Now we're gonna talk about the kettle. Modern art has been low-hanging fruit for internet comedians for as long as it's been a thing. They say, a toddler could do it. Why the fuck is this in a gallery? It's no art and it's got no meaning. To which I say fair. Fair, you have got a point, but then the art connoisseurs come out of their one million dollar apartment in a chic urban area and say, No, you are all uncultured imbeciles. Of course, it is art with a lot of meaning. You are just too stupid, poor to understand it. Me? Why is this? I miss when we make real art, like in the Renaissance and that. First of all, there is Baroque, your puny fool. Second of all, this single dot of paint on a naked canvas extrapolates the lonely condition of man. It reminds me of my own battle with society's norms. It can be so lonely sometimes. That's so real. I fight against the ruling class every day too. But um, why is your face doing that? It is my tortured background. You see, it's giving a disheveled and prophetic aura about me while still exuding a um, intriguingly cultured and uh, captivatingly studied air. Ah, so you're just doing a bit. Just like you're lying about that dot having any meaning. Ha, got you. Smarter. How can you be smart? You are poor. You have no time to read. And it goes on and on and on in a cycle of pretentiousness on both sides. So I'm here to finally hopefully answer whether modern art is art. Does it have any meaning? Are those two concepts even related? All that and more on today's Art D. People feel like it takes no imagination and no skill. Speaking of which, a word from today's sponsor. <laughs> today's video is sponsored by Skillshare, the world's largest online learning platform. You already know it, baby. You know, art can be done in so many different ways, as this video is about to show us. However, we all know that there is a superior form of art and that is animation. Nobody hates animation. I myself have been dabbling in animation for a long time and I've heard about Procreate Dreams and how it's a software for people with uh, um, too much ambition for their current skill. I didn't know how to use that either. So I've been taking this lovely class right here and let me tell you it's been absolutely delightful. Bro, did you know that you can literally pick something up? The software is gonna record it and it's gonna be animated. You don't have to animate in each frame of that thing moving that's insane you already know i found this class on skillshare the largest online learning community for creatives they get thousands upon thousands of classes thought by industry experts design illustration productivity whatever you want baby also summer is right around the corner perhaps it is time that you invest in yourself by learning a few new skills and you guys better skillshare is hooking the first 500 people to click the link in my description with a one month free trial so run babes and listen if you don't know where to start skillshare has got you with learning pads. Learning pads are a series of classes that build upon each other to get you from a novice to an expert in no time. And they're available in all categories you can probably think of. A lot of marketable skills right here. It'll be so sexy if you click that link and sign up for a trial and learn something. Thank you so much Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Check out the link in the description. Now back to the video. First of all, we've got to get some naming misconceptions out of the way. Because what most people think of when they think of modern art is not always modern art. Yes! It's giving gonorrhea read the poor imbecile. Fucking calm down. <laughs> I was put on this earth to flex my critical muscle on the genteel institution of casual art. I cannot be calmed down. As I was saying, modern art is actually an art era that ran from 1860 up to 1970 and it was uh, actually kind of metal in a very fucking establishment kind of way. For clarity, as we are going forward, art can be classified within art eras that can be further broken down within art movements. So an era is like 100 years, a movement is like 10-20 years, okay? 
Okay, Impressionism is the first movement of the modern era. And it all started all the way back in 1859 in France. Because of course the French are gonna revolt. When absolute manic pixie girl Edward Manet submitted his painting The Absinthe Drinker to the Paris Salon or the Salon de Paris only for the very conservative committee to reject his ass. Not only did they reject his painting, they also dissed the shit out of it. They roasted him. They were like, ah, this shit is, uh, it looks unfinished. And who the fuck wants to see an alcoholic in a painting? Mon dieu, drunk, that working class shit. This is literally the bourgeoisie. What are you doing, Edouard Manet? And so poor Edouard Manet was done dirty by the Paris Salon. Only because he wanted to paint whatever the fuck he wanted to paint, however the fuck he wanted to paint. People he found interesting, not mythological stories. Like frolicking naked gals and lounging naked gals. The public actually chased him to Spain for this one. But he didn't like the food, so he came back. Yes, perseverant, high maintenance, high palate lady, come back. But the public and the critics would just not stop clutching their motherfucking pearls. Regardless, he kept trying to make it into the salon, working with the institution, not against it. He was chill and naive and stupid like that. Essentially a centrist. And as we all know, centrists are just the oppressors who are pretending to be rational. So in the end, fuck money. They also go off. You are better than principled queen. However, mad lads Monet, not to be confused with Manet, Monet, and Renoir, and a few other sexy rebel painters were watching all of this unfold while getting their own paintings rejected by the salon. But the salon was like, cool, cool. You can display your shit painting in the room next to your menu. It's literally called the Salon du Reject, the Salon of Rejects. Mm. Okay. okay, the innate disrespect of that is lost on us at this moment, so we accept. Oh. Actually, actually, it turns out you're hiking cramp in my style. I heard they paint outside. Uh, fuck out of here. Sacre blue in that. And then the rebel sexy artists were like, oh, it's on you crusty prudes. And they made their own gallery and invited other artists to display their art there as long as they cut ties with the fucking salon. And that's impressionism, baby. A bunch of dudes who went to paint outside even when society would not let them. Wait, what was this video about? Ah, yes. Modern art, baby. The point is. Don't get it twisted. This is modern art, and this is modern art also. And this, and this, and this. Van Gogh is a post-impressionist vibe. Yes, vibe. So when you say you hate modern art, do you hate Van Gogh? Most likely no. That would hurt his fucking feelings. Stop it. Modern art spanned over 100 years. There's hella art in there. And the principles of modern art are pretty cool. Progression and fucking establishment and all of that. But I guess it did lose that art for art's sake sentiment it had during Impressionism and Post-Impressionism. And it evolved into more uh, art to piss the previous generation off kind of thing. It became a race of creating art that was increasingly outrageous to the public, uh, increasingly original, increasingly avant-garde. So in a way, they went back to making art for the public, even if it was to piss them off, despite of how it started making art, regardless of the public. Hold, 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 hold on right there, you nincompoop. You have to put everything into context. Modern art is a statement against, well, uh, the bourgeoisie of back then. Now the bourgeoisie is uh, pretty cool and hip even. Some argue that the shift was very intentional actually. And the reason why it happened is World War One, baby. Traditional art was a symbol of the bourgeoisie who had sent their generation to a needless uh, bloody war. So modern art past this point is moving towards a non-representational abstract direction as a fuck you to their elders uh, by the way representational means uh, like a drawing of a cat that's representational it represents something from the real world non-representational um it's a uh, non-representational means uh, it's not tied to anything in the real world it's like a square shapes colors lines that shit 
An abstract art is tied to something in the real world, but the representation of it is uh, uh, very far removed from the actual thing that it's trying to represent. Uh, we're gonna be using these terms moving forward, so try to kind of remember that. So, traditional art was a symbol of the bourgeoisie who had sent their generation to war. So the artists were like, no, we're gonna make abstract and non-representational art as a fuck you to y'all. Which I would say is only partially true because the uh, art was already moving in an abstract direction before uh, World War One rolled around. And don't, don't get me wrong though, art is always gonna be influenced by the circumstance of its contemporary artists, especially if it's a fucking world war. I don't think we can credit the origins of today's art entirely to that although it is a nice story uh, that makes early 20th century artists seem like they had the curls and they were noble in that which yeah they were but that's not the whole story baby sometimes they were just a little bit manic i think the point where stuff got a little bit too wacky and more into that uh, abstract aspect that is so controversial today is when cubism came along in 1909 five years before the war started mind you but that's literally the most interesting aspect about it so we're not gonna talk we're not gonna talk about it much it's masturbation with a ruler and a sextant or whatever the fuck they use what do you want from me well i guess Cubism is the first ever concrete uh, manifestation of abstract art that we have got. Uh, it's pointy and ugly and I don't like looking at it. And it was made by that peepy -pee individual whom I have a personal vendetta against. <sighs> it's about to be pretty emotionally charged for me from now on because first world war just started and everyone started to get batshit crazy and philosophical and shit while trying and succeeding to convince everyone that they knew what they were doing and should be extolled for it speaking of which dadaism dadaism or anti-art is actually the movement who you can credit to world war one because it was created in direct response to it in 1917 it prized lack of reason and sense within art and they rejected all representational art they were anarchists love turns out to get in trench food for the bourgeoisie will do that to you the top dog of this movement is the ever annoying marcel motherfucking duchamp who by the way wasn't even formally part of dadaism when dadaism was uh, actually a group a long time after 1917 he was like meh my art fits this so it is it and he was pretty famous at that point so he became the face of the movement without all that murky political alignment as i said pretty fucking annoying guy he looked like what you think of when you think of a uh, pretentious art critic and he had the vibes and the character to back that shit up he rejected the art of many of his fellow artists calling it retinal art when i first read that i made my retinas do a mean ass cartwheel it's too pretty for the eyes the meaning is shallow 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 dumb dumb and shallow which by the way is a very fucking shallow statement in itself like what if you're pretty you can also be intellectual what are you trying to say marcel duchamp that's it i'm getting a headache art is not meant to be seen but to be felt he's forcing you to think brainless child i don't know bro maybe my 2024 internet deep fried mango psyche riddled by multiple active hyper obsessions simply is not the target audience for this um, very revolutionary statement uh, but excuse the shit out of my goddamn friend but duh so he felt that art should be for the mind and not for the eyes he would absolutely hate all the aesthetic girlies today obviously he was revolutionary at his time during the 1910s they barely had fucking electricity bro some people even define all art by this guy there is art before duchamp and art after duchamp that's how influential he is considered to be and i, I have to say i do agree with some of his ideologies but uh, the execution just tires the fuck out of me man for example he's like art in that deep we yeah, right home, man. We oui. now look, this literal bidet is art because I said so. Kind of iconic. Also, as a dadaist, I will claim to be in a, a couple of years. 
Uh, I don't like uh, previous art, uh, so this is the Mona Lisa with the goat with the goat tea and the um, mustache. See how funny and satirical I am! Wow, this is so great. So I drew on it. It's not so great at all anymore, is it? I'm so smart. I like puns, by the way. And I get it. I get it. I swear I do, man. But why you gotta be so satirical and, and, and pretentious and mad about it? Anyway, this dude pretty much shaped the art scene today. For better or worse. For better or worse. Minimalism is very influenced by his mind art theory. And pop art pretty much credits its whole existence to him. He was also a drag queen. Fucking drag pioneer, bro. Her name was Rose La Vie, which was a pun on eros c'est la vie meaning uh, sex it is life uh, a lot of his works were very sexual and shit that's something that you now know moving right along to surrealism where critical thinking comes to die and everyone has deliberately lost the fucking plot surrealism aimed to free people from the shackles of false rational thinking and the rigid social customs of the time by combining the waking world with the dreamland if that sounds like some fucking freud shit uh, you'd be right because uh, a lot of their shit was based on on his writings fuck freud all of us said in unison they were communists bro except for uh, dali who was a fucking fascist get a side note here this painting is called the treachery of image also known as this is not a pipe and if it's got no haters I have been offed by the fucking surreal this is actually not a pipe it's not a pipe it's a it's a representation of a pipe it's an image of a pipe actually 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 it's actually the grotesque love child of um actually and that's deep, man. It's not fucking deep. It's the pun of the art world. And if you like, this is not a pub. We cannot be friends. Our vibes simply will not match. It's making me question myself. Yeah, maybe your name really is hungry. <laughs> I was right, got it. It's a meme being passed as the pinnacle of philosophical thought. Thought. Well, regardless of my hate for it, it is indeed not a pipe. It is a representation of it, a mere image, a kitsch, a copy. So what are we to do? How do we depict the beauty of the world without merely replicating it? Turns out a Dutch guy named Mondrian had been brewing up an answer for some time and this was it. Apparently, this is universal beauty. Let me, let me level, let me level with you for a second right here. I can vibe with modern art. I think by this point it's clear that it's maybe not my favorite, but I can vibe with it. This the squares and the fucking lines and the grids and the circles is where I draw the line. I got a dip. At this point in history, I got a dip. I have been trying to be open and read so many essays and opinions on what makes this painting a spiritual and mystical experience for some people, but I just don't. I just don't agree, babes. To the point where I can't even begin to try to explain the intent behind these fucking grids for the video I just don't get it and I never will and that's fine but right along cape abstract expressionism if you got the impressions that I don't like the, the movement before I fucking hate this one listen everybody listen everybody everything has been getting more avant-garde and avant-garde and avant-garde but what what if we stop focusing on the painting and instead we focus on the artist doing the painting what if we made abstraction of even the subject matter. What if it is about what I feel? What I feel when I splash about this pen on this canvas? What if you try and guess from the colors and from the velocity of this dollop of paint? I'd rather not. I'll make a painting about nothing because there is my freedom as an American. I'd rather not. <laughs> yeah, abstract expressionism is the first American art movement to be recognized by the Europeans um, and I guess you can tell, I can't really vibe with it Pollock's art is what most people mean when they say modern art could be made by a fucking toddler and for some reason it's the style most self-proclaimed lovers of modern art uh, try their hand at listen I feel like abstract expressionism is so fucking self-centered all art kind of is by default you make something and you expect people to look at it but there just is something something so intrinsically infuriating about uh, 
splashing some paint about and then making it all about how you felt when you did it and telling me that I should emphasize with you when I just don't babes. I don't. The fact that you did it on a comically large canvas is not gonna endear me to it. Nice try. Almost, but no! It's ugly, and perhaps the flop of the century, and why is it two million dollars? And there is also pop art, but fuck pop art. So, now that we know a little bit more about her, we can have a proper, informed discussion about modern art. Remember babes, you need to know somebody to read somebody. Now you can say that all of this is very devoid of whimsy and not very fun at all. The bitches were clearly not invited to the meeting. The art era that we are currently in is called contemporary art. Art that is being made by current artists. And shit's more wacky than it's ever been before, baby. Contemporary art is strongly influenced by the later stretch of modern art. So you can see why people still largely refer to art made today as modern art. Even though it technically isn't. As I said, it's gotten conceptual as fuck. Lost all that allegory, abstract pun bullshit. There is a trend of letting the viewer create the art by experiencing it and assigning it meaning. Which makes me feel high. We don't even need to legalize Maria. Just get all the students in a fucking gallery. To actually get to the question that we set out to answer in the beginning of this video. Is modern art even art? The thing is, bestie, the fact that we're asking this question is part of their beat. Wait, what? You will never understand. You are too low concept. Too retro. <laughs> Told you it makes you feel high. Remember Marcel Duchamp and his urinal? He made it art to question the very idea of what makes art art. Is art art because an artist said it is? A lot of today's art wants to let you decide that. And if it is indeed art, you have to assign your own meaning to it. Oh, maladaptive daydreaming. Yeah, I do that all the time too. It is interactive and current. I said, you would not understand. If you decide it has no meaning, then the next question in this hellish high concept dialogue tree would be, does art even have to be meaningful to be considered art? Most sensible people would say, of course, I might enact physical violence upon you for merely suggesting that. Is this art? Yeah, but it has no meaning. It's just a pretty drawing, there is no substance. But it's a drawing. A drawing with no meaning. And it's still art, because I said so. Look at that art with no meaning. Ah, fuck. What's happening to me? You're having thoughts. The fuck I am. Quick, turn on the TV. Put on a video essay in the background. I'll get to scrolling on TikTok. Ow, hurry. Contemporary art is not all urinals and piles of bricks and squares. Uh, some of it is more conducive to the imagination than other. Some of it hits different. Take Can Help Myself by Sun Yuan and Peng Yu. Yes, can't help myself for a sudden unison. Hold on a minute now. The vibes are discombobulated and all of a sudden uh, the world seems bleak. If somehow you have not seen this piece of art or simply need a reminder, can't help myself is an art installation of a robot who seems to be gathering a blood-like substance as it takes a little dance break. It only makes more of a mess and the fluid escapes back out. She's just a girl. The robot has to start all over again like motherfucking Sisyphus. Over time, its movements become more and more sluggish to make matters even fucking worse. She's just a girl. And after three years, it dies. Well, the artist unplugged it, which... Uh, Sounds even more fucking sad. But it's not alive. So we really should make no fucking difference, right? Why do I feel so cold all of a sudden? <laughs> Many people really resonated with this robot, sympathized and pitied it, and even saw themselves in it. And so there is an absolute slew of meanings that people have come up with, even though the artists themselves never actually explained the piece. Some saw our capitalist-driven society, the robot, a worker who is stuck doing menial tasks as its vigor is slowly being sapped away, dying without ever truly accomplishing anything. Even though the worker is often aware of this, they simply can't help themselves but follow the path that society has laid out for them. <laughs> She's just a girl. Some others 
So their battle with mental health, trying to fix themselves, literally trying to gather themselves as they keep falling apart while the people around them perceive and criticize them. The point is, this piece of conceptual art has elicited a strong emotional response from millions of people around the globe. And it is far from being the only one. Elise Fan, parentheses for motherfuckers by John Boscovich, keeps me up at night. Now at first glance, you may be like, how can that fan possibly have any meaning? But once you know that, that fan is the only item that uh, the artist found in the apartment of his boyfriend that passed away during the AIDS crisis and his family cleared away all his other possessions including items that the couple shared kinda hits different that's very sad right? that's a very sad story but that's not all cause the artist took the fan encased it in plexiglass added some holes so that when the viewer stands in front of it they can feel a delicate gush of air almost like someone breathing it feels like the artist is making a desperate attempt to preserve his lover's memory to restore his breath in a way so feel it motherfuckers he was alive his memory is alive fuck me man these gays are trying to murder me so so you can't tell me that all a contemporary art has no soul some of it is bad Right, some of it is just bad. Like all artists, this has always been a thing. Some of it is shit, some of it is good. It is interesting though, most of the contemporary art that seems to really resonate with people is all incredibly fucking sad. I'm not really sure what that says. I really can't think of any contemporary art that has made me feel happy. But I can think of so many traditional paintings that just exude joy. I don't know if that's got to do with how elitist and pretentious the art world can feel sometimes nowadays. Or maybe we're all just so sad and disillusioned with our current society that nothing in the current day could spark joy. But I don't know, I don't know. Regardless, however, of the outliers who manage to slink into the hearts of the mainstream public, contemporary art largely remains hated by most people. They fear what they cannot understand, uh, the present is a facsimile of the past. Being an iconoclast is a burden reserved for the few. You know what? It must be nice to have the privilege of time to learn about all this fucking conceptual bullshit about iconoclasts and fucking facsimile shit. I just want to be able to go to a gallery after a long week of work and to be able to look at pretty paintings that make me feel pretty feelings. What I don't want is to waste my time off by looking at a banana taped to a wall that some prick who gets paid to do nothing has to explain to me. That's incredibly real of you. But the truth is, there are plenty of artists who still do romantic and baroque style paintings. You just gotta go to a gallery that's exhibiting those. Hm, thanks. I guess I never really thought to look for them. Yeah. I think the real issue is not whether art after Duchamp is real art or not, but that we take all approaches to art that are all valid within their own right and pit them against each other for no fucking reason. You do know that you are allowed your own opinions and if someone does not agree with them, it doesn't mean that your opinions are not valid. You do know that. The truth is, there is merit to be found in both conceptual and representation art. So having a superior attitude about understanding an esoteric field that is sustained and peddled largely by the 1% is not the serve you think it is. Just like labeling entire decades of art as shit a toddler could do is very ignorant and shows a lack of interest in the actual art scene. So in the end I don't think that any art type can be considered as superior to any art objectively speaking. Subjectively speaking I think considering the concept of something and trying to represent it uh, is pretty cool even though it makes my head hurt sometimes. I do still prefer paintings that have people and light and feel like a dream you could escape into and I don't feel inferior because of it. And you shouldn't either. Please like this video if you like this video, subscribe to see more shit from me. Bye bye! <laughs>